Hi, I'm Nick Monfort. I create interactive fiction, study video games, and other creative uses of the computer, and I'm associate professor of digital media at MIT. Nick, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. What, what are your memories of the classics, Zork and all those fantastic ones, Hitchhiker's Guide, Lurking Horror? Well, for me, that's, uh, it was a time when um, I was really starting to be interested in computing, uh, learning how to program, uh, but also uh, becoming an avid reader. Um, and so one of the things about interactive fiction that was so interesting at the time was that it brought these things together, that I saw how a uh, computer could create this interesting simulated world, uh, could pose these puzzles to me that I had to work out. Um, but at the same time, um, it gave me a lot of the pleasures of the reading experiences that um, uh, I was starting to appreciate and uh, starting to encounter. Those games I remember came in very elaborate uh, boxes and uh, the, the packaging was very much part of the pleasure of the, those boxes seem to have returned in limited edition games that I see now. Yeah, we call those, uh, those of us involved with interactive fiction nowadays, uh, refer to uh, those elements as feelies. Uh, the things that came along that, uh, like the Wishbringer stone that yeah. was a glow in the dark rock and um, the uh, Don't Panic button for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, so, you know, a nice thing about uh, Infocom's uh, interactive fiction was that uh, it wasn't copy protected, um, but uh, you would have these things bundled in that would entice you to want to have the package and want to buy the game. Um, and it also created this uh, way that you could get involved uh, with this um, uh, rich experience and start reading even before you uh, went and uh, put the disc in and started playing the game. So um, there would often be a rather elaborate backstory, like uh, in A Mind for a Voyaging, which uh, I think is one of the more provocative pieces that Infocom did. Um, uh, you'd have the uh, issue of Dakota Online Magazine that would tell you about uh, your character's um, you know, simulated life and a discovery that uh, um, he was actually a computer system. Um, and uh, that would all be uh, there as backstory that you could uh, uh, know about as you then started in playing the game. Where did that storytelling go in the 1990s? Well, um, there are games with feelies that uh, you know, people have uh, created interactive fiction and created um, those sort of uh, you know, supplementary um, pieces, as, uh, different elements to go along with them. Um, there's also um, just been incorporation of uh, more of that backstory um, uh, you know, lengthier sort of text at the beginning of pieces. And then, you know, people have also figured out that uh, uh, there are ways to dispense that information if you don't have the luxury of uh, shipping out packages like that, you're not a big company manufacturing things, that um, uh, you can actually design a game so that you um, let people know about things like that along the way. Cool. Thanks a lot.